Hello guys, welcome to Geologic Concepts. Now in this uh, lecture, we will see the ternary phase diagrams. So we are done with the binary in the last two lectures. Now in this one, we will see ternary. Okay. So I'll divide this lecture in three parts. So let's begin. So last time we ended in these two diagrams. I ended the lecture with these two diagrams. Now you see this first diagram here. this one now in this diagram you can see that a three dimensional representation of three component system now one component is a one component is b and one component c now this is a three dimensional representation of a three component system now you can you should note that the composition is measured along the sides of the base of a triangle of the base base triangle you see there is a base triangle there right this so the Composition is measured along the base of the triangle. Okay. Now moving on, we know that the top of the figure shows a surface with contours representing line of constant temperature. You see this contours, you see contours. Now these are the contours. Contours means any contour represent let's say this thousand. So along this contour, every point has a temperature of thousand degrees Celsius. So that's what contours represent. In a geologic map also contour represents the point of the same height in a map here the contour represents of same temperature okay so as the contour goes down the temperature decreases okay so what you see here is a two-dimensional representation of this of this diagram okay this is a two-dimensional representation in which everything has been projected into one plane okay of ABC now uh, from uh, so if you see this figure if you see this figure from top it will some it will look like this projected onto a basal triangle okay now the boundary curves and isotherms are also shown projected onto the basal triangle now you should note here that the temperature decreases toward the center of the diagram see, if you go towards the center from all the sides whether you go from here here or you go from here the temperature decreases as in this contour okay uh, as in this 3d figure also it was decreasing towards the center okay so this is the basics of this uh, this diagram okay now we'll move on and understand how crystallization actually takes place okay so you see this figure here first we'll deal with the equilibrium crystallization at uh, where all two component systems are binary eutectic okay so two components here are what are two components a b b c and a c so these three components or you can say all the two components which, which is three are binary eutectic okay now what we do we trace the crystallization of composition x you see x here we'll trace the crystallization of this composition x okay so we'll do it from the start what will happen okay now the this figure is same as the last figure means uh, only the contours are absent in this diagram rest everything is same okay let's begin so i'll just zoom into this diagram to so now you see now since the since the composition of x has some amount of a b and c in it the final composition will will have crystals of a b and c okay now as a temperature of about 980 degree celsius okay this is around x x the temperature here is around 980 degree celsius now as the temperature cools down it would intersect the liquid surface x would intersect so temperature is uh, decreasing in this direction okay so as the temperature decreasing in this direction as it cools down it will intersect this okay now at this point it would begin to precipitate crystals of c so as it will move away from here okay it will move away from here it will precipitate crystals of and it reaches point o right so um now c is precipitating and the liquid is becoming impoverished in c okay and enriched in the components of a and b all right now 
as we reach the temperature 820 degrees celsius or or the point l where is l point l is here okay so at as we reach the point l we can determine the relative proportion of the crystals from this formula crystals will be a upon a plus b in 200 since this length is a and this length is e b so and the liquid will be b upon a plus b in 200 okay so this is the liver rule we are applying here okay so what happened crystals uh, x first uh, started moving towards this line crystals of c started precipitating as we reach the point l we can calculate the crystals uh, percentage of crystals and liquid using these two formulas of the liver rule and then it further crystallizes and reaches point o okay now as it reaches point o the boundary at the boundary the at this curve this is the boundary curve here at this curve a will then start crystallizing the liquid path will then follow the boundary curve towards point m so it will come here till o and then it will follow towards m okay now the bulk composition of the solid phase precipitated during this interval will be at will be a mixture of a and c okay and the proportion shown by the point p where is p here this point so the crystal will be which would be forming a and c will be forming so this point p will represent the composition in which a and c will be formed okay the composition all right so this was it so we have reached till point o m all right now moving on we know that at point M we can calculate the bulk composition. Okay. Solid percentage solid will be Mx upon Mn into hundred. Mx here is the length, this length, Mx and Mn is the whole length. Okay. This is the bulk composition. It's not the crystal composition, it's the bulk total composition. That's why we are drawing a straight line from here. Okay, which is uh, cutting at point n okay and the liquid will be xn that is just uh, 100 minus solid percentage okay now if you want to actually calculate percentage a how much a is formed in the solid okay then you have to change the formula and you have to take nc where is nc see this length nc all right this length nc and uh, AC is this complete length so that will be the percentage A in solid okay and percentage C will be A N upon A C so that is just simple liver rule but see, you have to understand that the difference between bulk composition and percentage A in solid if you are calculating solid you will take this line as we have took point P when we are calculating the ratio in which the crystals will form at point m but how much solid is present then you have to take this length you know the line which is intersecting m x line is intersecting a c at n all right now then you have again if you have to find exact percentage of crystal a okay then you have to say that percentage a in solid into how much is the solid okay this is what this is percentage a in solid form now how to calculate the exact percentage then percentage a in solid into how much is the solid which is percentage crystal upon 100 okay so it will become nc upon ac into mx upon mn all right you have to remember this so exact percentage now exact percentage of c you will calculate as a n upon ac this is ac here a n upon ac into mx upon mn okay so ac will be in the denominator so this will give you exact percentage of solid okay so this is this here again i am repeating it so that you it gets absolutely clear that percentage a in solid is nc upon ac so this is solid in this percentage a let's say this is a so how much is this but what is exact percentage so this is let's say this is solid and this is total bulk composition so how much is this solid in this total composition 
then you calculate percentage of crystal A. That will be the exact percentage. Okay. So I think it's clear now. Next is if we move on, we get to point E. So now what will happen? This will move towards E. And as soon as it reaches E here, it B will start precipitating. Okay. And it will remain at this point till all the B gets precipitated. So finally we will have crystals of C A plus B and all solid. Okay. So E is at 650 degrees Celsius. So if you repeat it uh, at 980 at point X in the starting there was all liquid. Then from 980 to 680 there was crystallization of C liquid plus crystallization of C. Then at 680 to 650 A started crystallizing. Okay. Which is O to M. Then at 650 there was liquid A plus B plus C and at temperature less than 650 all the B would have been crystallized. Okay. So this is the ternary diagram or uh, explanation of the ternary diagram. So you can now calculate anything asked in the exam. Okay. X can start from here also. Okay. So X can start in here. X can be anywhere. Okay. So as long as it is binary eutectic all the three crystals will be formed A, B and C. All three crystals will be formed. Okay. So I think it's clear. So this is for this lecture. Next, in next lecture, we will take crystallization in ternary system that has a compound that melts congruently. Okay, starts melting congruently. Okay, we will see that. Okay, so no bye for now. And please, please mention in the camera, are you liking this initiative? Do you want me to, you know, carry on with this? Uh, I have been getting good response, but uh, please do mention it. It it increases you know uh, energy to uh, make more videos and you know deliver so thank you see you then subscribe to know your planet better